Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Glenda Baker, and I am a real estate agent in Atlanta, Georgia. Welcome to Glenda's Guru. And you are not going to believe this, ladies and gentlemen, but I have the $8 billion woman here herself, Jade Mills, in studio in Beverly Hills, her Mecca. Help me welcome my friend and inspiration, Jade Mills. Thank you, Glenda. I'm so happy to be here. And I'm so happy we get to hang out here in Beverly Hills. Do you know we've been like two weeks in a row together? That's right. (laughs) We had so much fun in Las Vegas. We did. We had a great time. So, Jade, I mean, yeah. Okay, for the people who don't know you, you've been in real estate how long? Mm, 30-something years. I think like 35. Oh, wow. And... And I can I and I know that we're going to get to this because I'm going to take us to where I want us to go, but eight billion dollar woman getting close to nine. Oh my <laughs> gosh! Getting close to nine, but you know that's over a long period of time, and that's also our prices are so high here. So when someone says how many units have you sold, I'm always like, I don't know. I mean, it's really not that many. And I know that a lot of people <laughs> have to sell like 200 a year or something. But, I mean, for us, if we sell just a few hundred million or 60 million or even $20 million homes, it doesn't take as long to get to $8 billion Jade, nine. it's $8 billion. <laughs> Any way you slice it, whether you slice it in units or money, it's a lot. It's a lot. It's a lot. And I would probably say... Not everybody has the skill set to work with, you know, somebody who's buying a zillion dollar house. Like, like, like before we get there. So and, I, and, and I've heard this story, but I, I don't know why you got into real estate or how you got into real estate or what compelled you to get into real estate. I know what happened on day one, but what happened before that said, oh, I'm going to be a real estate agent? Okay, so what I don't usually talk about is I was married to my first husband. You know I've had a couple. Yeah. I was married to my first husband, and I had my daughter Tiffany, and I wasn't working. We were traveling. He was a singer. I played the tambourine. (gasps) We played the Sahara in Las Vegas, the Sahara in Lake Tahoe, a lot of little clubs, Hilton hotels all over the United States. And in, in those days, you would... You would be hauling the U-Haul with the organ and the drums behind you. So it was very fun. I was married three years. I dropped out. We both went to Berkeley, both quit school our first year, and got married and started traveling. So Tiffany was born three years later, and about six months after that, he left. And I was like, oh, my gosh, my tambourine career is over. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> Thank so God. <laughs> I also I also sang back up with the mic off because I can't sing. So those days were over and I was like, oh my gosh, what do I do now? I had done some TV commercials. I had done some modeling, not made any money doing that. So I had to sell my little house and never sell, never sell. We'll talk about that later. We will. I had to sell my little house. And when I sold my little house, the real estate agent said, well, what are you going to do? I said, I have no idea. I got a job at the Century Plaza Hotel as a cocktail waitress in the lobby. And he said, you need to be a real estate agent. So I went to real estate school, got my real estate license. And then I said to Spike, who was a retired police officer, I said, what do I do now? You come into our office and I'll train you. Okay. So that was the very beginning. So I was working as a cocktail waitress. I met my second husband, who was a developer, sold him land to build apartment buildings. And then nine nine years later, he passed away. So then I met Adam, who you know. Yes. And Adam and I have been together for 35 years. And that's when I really started working in real estate. Do you know, don't take this the wrong way. You are so beautiful, and your eyes are so just captivating. It's almost Linda, difficult to look away. You are so lovely. And I think to myself, it's it, 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 obviously from the outside looking in, but what I am so attracted to is 
just the aura that comes in the room with you. It is this amazing, graceful, loving, excited oh. to be alive personality. And it it's it's larger than life. And and I I I don't think I, I can't I can't articulate it uh, well enough on camera, but I, I wish that it's like one of those things, like I wish there was like smell television. <laughs> like, I, like I wish that people could be in the room with you because as magical as you are on video, oh. you are a thousand times more captivating in person. You're so sweet. Don't tell anybody I don't want to ruin my image. But you know what? <laughs> I do think... We have a very mutual admiration for each other, and I do really feel we've been through it a little yeah. bit, and we appreciate our lives very much yeah. where we are now. And as we said yesterday, if this would be over tomorrow, I would be very unhappy because I love what I do. But life goes on, yeah. and we go on. I remember when my second husband died, people would say to me, oh, I feel so bad for you. I feel so sorry for you. Your first husband left you. And your second husband left you. He died. And I was like, I don't feel bad. I mean, I feel like I was so sad. But I felt like my life is going to go on. Right. And we're going to make it work. We're survivors. Yeah, absolutely. A hundred percent. And you are much more beautiful in person also because you know I've been watching you. I can't even believe what you've done and where you've come with this, doing this. And it's amazing. No, I've listened so many times. You have great tips for people and you tell people things that nobody else even thinks to talk about. So I love it. Thank you. I'm going to continue watching. Good. I hope so. I hope I so. Will. So, so what was, so you go to the first day into the office, you're going to be a real estate agent and 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 what do you do? Like you get there and like nobody nobody tells you. Everybody thinks that like you know what to do. Or like that the Always. buyer just waltzes in and you just show them like one, two, three banana street and it's ten million dollars <laughs> and you know, they buy it magically. They like what did you do? You got to the real estate office thirty something years ago. And I went into the training program where they say, How do you think you're gonna get clients? I was like, I don't know. I think I'm here for you to tell me. <laughs> so they said, well, we suggest you sit open houses. Well, I don't sit open houses anymore, but it was grueling, I think. You sit there waiting for someone to come in. I had a few experiences that weren't that pleasant. Um, then you door knock. You do all the things that they tell you to do in the beginning, and that's enough for any real estate agent to say I'm quitting. <laughs> <laughs> but I think the most important thing that happens to us when we first get started is when somebody really does come in, I will never forget, I was sitting floor time <laughs> at, at the office and someone called me and I was like, oh my gosh, Tiffany, my one and a half year old at the time was on the floor and I said, come on, we're going to go show a house. Well, in those days there were lock boxes. And so I got the lockbox combination. I went to show the house. It was a Los Angeles Times delivery person. And he said, you know, I want to see the house. We go in. We, we're in there like five minutes. Come out. And he says, I want to buy it. Can you write it up? So I'm like, what do I do now? <laughs> so I take him back to the office. Right. I call my trainer. He walks me through the paper. But... I didn't ask, can you afford this? How much can you put down? You have to get a loan. So the next 60 days were a, my, my true training program right. because I learned that you have to get a loan yeah. and you have to qualify and you have to put money down. So all of those things, I think in the very beginning, the best way to learn is on the job. Yeah. And I learned a lot. So it ended up his mother-in-law helped him with the down payment and the loan and we closed and we stood out. That was my first sale. We stood out in front of the house on the day of closing and the, the mother-in-law, his wife and I cried because we were so happy. But that's the same thing we were talking about yesterday. Yeah. What is our business about? What makes us the happiest 
is finding the house or selling the house for those clients and having them say, thank you. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. It's worth everything. Yeah, knowing that you did a great job, knowing that you made this incredible match, you took the buyer, you brought what they said they wanted to life and delivered it. And did the best you could. You did such a great job. And then they're going to do life in that house. They'll raise their kids or have their birthday parties or it's amazing. Celebrate the milestones of their life in the homes that we sell. I have this um this tagline, we provide the we provide the backdrop, you create the memories. I love it. And it really is because I never will forget I would see my clients Stephen and Tara and they had these two little girls and you know, every father-daughter dance, there was a picture on the stairs. Every Christmas oh. was in front of the fireplace. And I was like, the house that I sold them is the backdrop of their life. But only the house. Yeah. Not the home. Yeah, exactly. I get it. I know that you are referred a lot by your clients. Yeah. And that is a real compliment to you because you've done a great job for those people and they want their friends and family to have that same experience. Do you think that that has been the cornerstone, the foundation of your business is the referral from past clients? A lot of referrals, a lot of name recognition yeah. that my husband thought was so important yeah. and put me on the back of the playbill or put me on the cover of the Beverly Hills Magazine, all these things. I never really wanted my picture out there like that. But he said, this is what makes you successful as a real estate agent is name recognition. And I really, truly believe that that it has what is what has taken me to this place is name recognition. So and you, and you told me this story or you told this story in Las Vegas and I hadn't heard it before about that. He put your name everywhere. Like it wasn't like a real estate sign. Like it was just your name was everywhere. And your name wasn't Jade Mills at that time. So how long from first date to when you were Jade Mills? Well, that was, uh, I, even when I was Jade Mills, which was uh, three years later, um, I, I kept saying to my husband, you know, I, I have to have this name. I mean, yeah. we've done all this work. Right. Jade Quitman, he was, oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> 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 he said, you have agreed to change your name. Right. You're going to change it for real estate reasons also. So I was like, okay. But that's when we first started really pushing with yeah. the name recognition. But yes, my husband made signs before he was my husband. He made signs, nothing else on the sign except for Jade Quitman, a white background, black letters on a post everywhere, hundreds of them. And people would call me and say, are you running for office? What are you doing? We're, we see your name all down Sunset Boulevard and in the everywhere. And I would say, no, my husband is trying to give me name recognition because at the time, I, I mean, I was like, I was not a business person. Right. And the, the first thing I really did for business was I went to the kids' school, El Rodeo School. They were in, in Beverly Hills schools. And I said to the parents, which was very hard, it's very hard to ask for anything when you're first in real estate. Yeah. And I would say, I'm selling real estate and I would love to sell your house or your friends or family if you know anyone selling. And it was almost like they would say, oh, well, what have you sold in our area? Right. So it's really hard. So I would take someone with me. I would take one of the top agents in the office with me and we would get the listings. And that was what really propelled me into being able to advertise that I had sold something. Okay, so stop right there. So for those of you in the back who didn't hear that, let me just make that a little bit more clear for you. So she wasn't so prideful that she had to go to 123 Banana Street and get the listing by herself. She realized, hey, I'm new. I haven't sold in this neighborhood, but... This person in my office has, I'm going to take them with me. I'm going to split the deal. I'm going to get my name on the sign. I'm going to do all of the work. I'm going to learn from them because they've sold a ton. And it's really like you're paying that person not to split the deal as much as you are to learn from them. And 50% of something is better than nothing. 100%. Because the thing about it is, is if you hadn't taken that agent with you, the likelihood that you would have gotten that listing diminished 
the likelihood Zero. that you would have sold it would have diminished. And True. so you very early on learned that get, having that mentor, having that person, being able to watch that person was worth, was valuable to you. And you were prepared so valuable. to do it. Yeah. It, and you know what? That's the, I think of all the things that I see today is typically newer agents, they don't want to uh, share. Share. They want to, they, they, and this is what blows my mind. They'd much rather go out and rent a Maybach for a day, rent a Maybach for a week, drive their, around, take their picture, have their film crew follow them to show your listing, my listing. And maybe they'll put our names on them. Maybe. 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 And maybe not. And maybe not. And it's just, it, it, it blows my mind. Whereas if you picked up the phone and you said, hey, Glenda, because I remember my first big listing. I'll never, ever forget it. My first big listing. Did you sell it? I didn't get the listing Oh, on West Paces Ferry Road. I didn't, I didn't know how to price it. I didn't know, I didn't know anything. And I didn't think about like, oh, let me bring somebody with me. Like I never, ever thought about that. When I lost that listing, I've learned more from my failures than I've ever learned from me my too. successes. Me too. When I lost that listing, I cried. I went back to my office. I cried on my broker's shoulder. I'll never forget it. The next time I had an opportunity on West Paces Fair, I took the number one agent in the office. I said, hey, Glennis, will you go with me? Will you share this? And she said, absolutely. That woman walked in there. She had those people eating out of the palm of her hand. We got that listing. We sold that listing. And I learned so much from watching her that Best it was priceless. Ever. priceless. I, in all honesty, I should have given her all the commission <laughs> because it was she was that good and that giving. And I think that that's one thing. Uh, yesterday when we were doing our panel, what I always hear is that you are always willing to share, inspire, impact, inform other people, other agents. Why? Because I remember in the very early days, and I didn't get much help. And I asked a couple of times, but I didn't get a lot of help. And it was so uncomfortable for me that I don't want anyone to have to feel that way. And I really feel, what is it? I mean, I'm not mentoring people because I don't have the time. But if someone calls and asks me a question, or someone says to me, I really want this listing can you give me some pointers? I'm very happy to do that because there wasn't anyone there for me. Isn't it amazing how, again, how much you learn from your failures much more than from your successes? I remember my first big listing. What was and it? And that was someone called off a sign and said, um, I, 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 we own this house and we're going to list this house, but we also own this house in Bel Air, and we want to list it for forty million dollars or something. And I was like, "Oh my God, forty million dollars!" So I picked up the phone and called ten agents and said to them, "I'm going on this listing. You will be the first ones in if I get the listing, but I want you all to come and help me price it." And so they did. And I remember June Scott, who passed away many years ago, was the agent that said to me, girl, if you take this, it'll be your first big listing. You can advertise it, but you're never going to sell it. <laughs> <laughs> and I said, June, I want this listing. She said, well, then take it for whatever the number is that they want. So I took it for like $40 million. I had it for five years. It oh. never sold. It never sold. They canceled the listing and sold it after five years. But, but I filmed the Ellen show there. I had, I had billionaires from all over the world coming to look that I got to meet. I um, sold their property in Malibu. I sold their house. I sold them a house in Beverly Hills. So there were many, many pluses to that listing. But after five years, they sold it for, I think, $21 million. <gasps> and I got nothing. But, but great experience. Yeah. And a lot of, of PR. 
I, I mean, I, I, I'm sorry, but I just like was like, you filmed the Ellen show? <laughs> I'm like, you met billionaires? I'm like thinking to myself. From that listing. I mean. From taking that listing for too much money. I mean, sometimes you just have to do what you got to do. What year was that? Oh, gosh. That has to be 17 years ago. 20, maybe 20 years ago. Oh, wow. Okay. And so has that house sold since then? It hasn't. It's on the market. It is not. It's on the market. Oh, my stars. It's on the market for sale or lease. Okay. For just uh, right around what they paid for it, 20 something. But it's 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 a it's a different it's a different house. I wonder what, what do I'll you, take you there. Oh my stars, we have to go. <laughs> okay, so let me ask you a question. So, what do you think made those people think that that house was worth forty million dollars? I don't think they ever thought it was worth forty. I think that they thought if they could get forty, they would be thrilled and and they would just keep it on the market. And if we got it, great. And if we didn't, great. But I don't think they ever really thought. They put a lot of money into it. They took a house and built levels and more levels down. So it's on like three or four levels. And it's not, I mean, if you wanted to live in the main house, you'd be living in like seven, about 7,000 square feet. But it's many levels with a bowling alley and a pool and a, and a, and a, and a you know, just. Wow. That's so crazy. So what what's your biggest sale? Um, my biggest sale is not the Playboy Mansion. Uh, my biggest sale is the um, $150 million sale, which I signed a confidentiality. But I, I was one of the listing agents. The Playboy Mansion, I was the the agent that brought in the buyer. And there were there were a couple or three, maybe four agents on the selling side, but I brought in the buyer. So that's my, that's my biggest sale where I represented the buyer. Well, yes. And like, how do you know how, how do you know when a house is worth a hundred million dollars or $150 million? Like, like, is it, is it really worth that? Or are you rolling the dice that someone's willing to pay that? Okay, I have two answers. Okay. There aren't a lot of people who are willing to pay $100 million for a property. Right. Um, I, those people, I would say, have to have really a lot of money. It, it's not like, you know. Yeah, legendary wealth. Yes. Um, so it's finding those people. But it's also those homes I've sold, I guess, five over a hundred million or over. Those people know what they want. Yeah. And they're all very special in one way or another. So are they worth it? They're worth it to the buyer. Right. But I think you really have to understand that it may take a long time because they're, those are very special buyers that can afford those properties. So, so you know, I'll ask you this question. So I think about the Playboy Mansion. Like, in my head, it was hideous. Like, the decor of it. <laughs> like, you know, I mean, like, like from a, like, who's going to buy it and live in it the way that it is? It's really a redo or a teardown or whatever you call it, right? Am I right? Yes. Okay. So, and you there's only X number of people that can pay that much money or are going to pay that much money for a house. Yes. So it's really kind of easy because you know that you have a limited number of people and you probably know who those people are because they've got that legendary wealth. But because it was the Playboy Mansion, did it have like, was was there value in the in the Playboy Mansion name? I think... Of, of all the homes where the business managers or the sellers say, my home is worth this because I am a celebrity or I am Hugh Hefner, I, right. I am, that probably more than any other home uh, has that value, Okay, has some, some of that value. I have a lot of business managers who will say, I'm the business manager for 
whoever the person is, uh, a celebrity. And so this house isn't worth thirty million; it's worth fifty million because right. that's never the case. No, you'll get more people in yeah. to view it, but people that have that kind of money are very smart, exactly. and they're not going to overpay because it belongs to a celebrity. Yeah, I think um, all of those homes, the the Spelling Manor. Yes. Um, it was a fabulous house. Right. And it had been redone when I sold it. And I, I think it was just one of those homes where the grounds were great, the location was great, prime Homeby Hills. So there's always a reason. The house in Malibu on the bluff um, that Byron Allen purchased, amazing. A long private driveway on the bluff, walk to the beach. I mean, a, a amazing house. So there's a reason why those are $100 million. But how do I know the value? I think the same way you know the value. You see everything that's on the market all of the time. You know what all the sales are. You are very big like I am on knowledge and knowing yeah. Everything, not just tracking what's in the multiple listing service, but tracking through the title companies, everything that's sold. So when we go on a listing, it's not that we're saying like a new agent would say, oh, gosh, well, you know, I think the price is this. We really know. Right. Because we track everything. So no matter what the price, if it's a, a, a condo on the Wilshire Corridor or if it's it's a bluff property in Malibu or something in Homeby Hills, we we have a very good idea of what that should sell for. Well, and I, I think the difference between our knowledge of product and just a regular real estate agent's knowledge of product is completely different because we have intimate details of being in the property, why the person bought the property, why the person sold the property. What's wrong? Exactly. And we can go one, two, three, five owners back mm -hmm. on on most every one. Every, everything that's like that. It, there's so many different layers and factors that go into what it lists for, what it sells for. And the typical real estate agent looks at an MLS sheet. That's right. And that and they think that they're going to walk into the listing presentation on 123 Banana Street and they're going to go with their listing paperwork and they're going to be able to and show that one piece of paper. Yeah. And say this is what it should be. Exactly. How long have you been in the business? 32 years on September the 4th. That's an exact time. Yes. <laughs> Yeah, I, I mean, I, I it, love it. It is shocking to me. It's shocking, but that's why you know everything. Yeah, because and, you've been through it for thirty-two years. Yeah, and I've been in every house. I mean, like for me, like broker open, like I, so many agents, like, pfft, yeah, I, I don't, I'm not, good, I'm not wasting my time doing that. I know nobody's buying a house for me at broker open. No, but I literally can go in and catalog every single thing without listing, and and then when somebody at the PTA meeting, somebody at dinner, somebody at the charity event asks me about 123 Banana Street. I know every single thing about that house. And I can and I can talk about it. Like I don't need to pull out my notes because no. I've been in it. I've I've been immersed in it. Yes. And it's so um I think that a lot of agents um really discount the nuance of intimate knowledge. Absolutely true. And that sheet, that one sheet that they give to their sellers is like, if anybody else has gone for that listing, they're like, well, that's only the beginning. Yeah. That's not enough. That doesn't tell you no. anything. I love that. I love that. So is it difficult? Is the business difficult for you? Or it, it, it just, it's not? <laughs> I don't think our business is easy. I think we always have difficult buyers and sellers. I think we have easier deals. I think that we sometimes will have a great deal. And I was just talking to another agent about this, and we said we just had the genie in the bottle because those deals don't happen that often. Where somebody comes once, they send someone for the inspections, we go over the inspections, they say, okay, we want it. Do you think we could ask for the, the uh, kitchen faucet to be tightened? 
and we close. I mean, that is fabulous. But that, as you know, and, and now we have something new in our business where we're going to have to have the buyers sign something saying that they're working with us. Well, I mean, that could be very good for us. Oh, it's going to be great for us. But not so good for agents that aren't experienced. Right. But it could be very good for us. But I think the business is always changing. We have to keep on top of the changes, which we do. Yeah. But I think it, it's it's it becomes maybe a little bit easier because of knowledge. But I wouldn't say we're in an easy business. You know, I think that we are not necessarily real estate brokers as much as, and I think that this change with the settlement and with um, buy side commissions is going to shift our business where it is mandatory that you're going to be a trust broker, you're going to be a knowledge broker. Yes. People are going, now more than ever, people are going to do business with you because they trust you. Mm -hmm. And and that was something that we kind of talked about a little bit yesterday. Um, but I, I felt like that we had some resistance to it because, um, you know, if if you don't know somebody from Adam's house cat, then are they going to sign a document to pay you a commission to only work with you? You know, are they going to do that? And I think that when you built your business on relationships and knowledge and trust, it's much easier for you to get that document signed with without feeling insecure and understanding how to deal with the pushback. You and I are very confident. Yeah. Why? Because we do the right thing, because we're knowledgeable. And we can be confident. If you hand someone a paper and you say, here, sign this, what we're going to have to do is explain why right. they're signing and what this is. And if you are knowledgeable, if you do your homework, you're going to know what to say and why, and we'll have that paper signed. I also feel like we've been in the business long enough so people, we've made these relationships, and like, like our, our joke about the hall route, which is we'll, we'll, talk, <laughs> we'll talk a little about the hall route, but we can't expect our clients to just know things. Right. I mean, I had a, a fabulous Russian billionaire. He did not know how the, the uh, contract read or what was in it or... What's escrow? or and, and it was like, oh, my gosh. In the beginning, I was thinking, this man is so smart, and he doesn't know. Well, it's done differently all over the world. Yeah. Just like the hall route. So I was telling Glenda <laughs> why this house was so valuable, because it had a huge basement and blah, blah, blah. And we could no longer have the same hall routes and take the dirt out. And Glenda was like... Like walking down the hall, H-A-L, -L. and I was like, no, hauling the dirt out. But I'm expecting her yeah. to know that they don't have hall routes. No, because you, you can have a basement in Georgia. Sometimes you have to have a, like my house is on a cliff. You got to have a basement because if you don't, like, what are you doing with all that empty space? And so I, I was like, the hall route, like, like what in the <laughs> hell? I mean, it just in my head and I kept thinking to myself, I need to talk to her about like, how, like how, what is she talking about? But this is the thing is like, n now that you've explained it to me, like, I'm like, okay, who knew that was so valuable? And it's, you've got to take that dirt out yeah. to put the basement in. Yeah. And it is so valuable. Yeah. And, and you never, ever know that. And you live up in an area where there's like a cliff and a canyon and a view and all this stuff. And it makes it even more valuable, I would assume. Absolutely. Absolutely. So, Jade, let me ask you a question. So you and I, when we were in Las Vegas, we talked about we wish that we had never sold anything. Of all the houses that we've ever bought, we wish we just held on to all of them. Absolutely true. And I know that we tell our clients the same thing. Yeah. Never sell. Never yeah. sell. The first house I had, I think I bought for 
$8,000. That was when Tiffany was a baby. And I sold it, I think, for 56 Not like your story. You had a better story. Um, and I thought that I had just won the lottery. Yeah. And that house sold recently for a million nine. Yeah. And then I had another and another. But at the time, I couldn't buy and fix right. unless I sold what I was living in. But then later on, we started buying. And then all of a sudden, we could buy and keep, buy and keep, buy and keep. Yeah. The wealthiest people in the world own real estate. Yeah. Whether it's units, commercial, industrial, they own real estate. And so they have passive income. Yeah. And what could be better? But I think we both say to our clients, if you can't buy without selling, wait a little bit, save a little yeah. more, but never sell. Well, and you know, the th I, I always say, you never lose money in real estate if you never put yourself in a situation to have to sell. Yes. Because if you can choose when you sell, you're always going to make money, number yep. one. And there isn't any home that I've sold zero to 31 that's not worth more in your 32. Absolutely. And I I mean, it, it was so funny. I'm going to do a, uh, uh, a video this afternoon about... Um, like the most notable houses that I've sold. And I talk about the first house that I sold, a $60,000 condo. I talk about when I sold the wrong house. I talk about... Oh, I remember that. <laughs> That's a great story. It, 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 we're going to put a picture to the house. So it's going to be so cool. I'm so excited. But that, ever, I never, ever, ever... There's not ever any deal that I do, whether it's for myself or for my clients, that I don't think about that townhouse, that $100,000 townhouse that is now worth a million dollars. And I think about, like, how that would have changed my daughter's life. I mean, I remember my daughter bought a house. They decided they wanted to sell that house. If they had held onto that house for a year... It would have made a $200,000 difference. And, and that's the thing is like, I want people to understand why real estate is such a wealth builder. And it's just not, it's, it's not talked about enough, I don't think. It's not. It's definitely yeah. not. I mean, people talk, uh, talk about putting their money in the stock market. Yeah. Or putting their mark, money in a, in a business they know nothing about. Yeah. Real estate will, will always, as you say, always go up. And- why not hold it? And Why it's, not rent it? Hold. And it's real. It's like real. you can see, touch, touch, and feel it. it. Like think about, I mean, and, and think about our age, our generation. We're making money. Number one, to buy a $137,000 house in 1975, you've got to have $26,000. Well, to buy $137,000 worth of stock, Kodak stock, you got to have one hundred and thirty-seven thousand dollars. Exactly. Number one. Number. That's two, a great point. Yeah. Number two, you can't live in your Kodak stock. Like you can like live in a house. So not only does it appreciate, I only had to put twenty-six thousand dollars. And you down, can rent it. And then you can rent it. But the thing about it is, is that no matter what, one, two, three Banana Street is going to be sitting there. And I don't know about you, but the last time I checked, Kodak stock wasn't worth $137,000. And that's the thing is like you never, ever know. It's a piece of paper. You are at the mercy of technology. You're at the mercy of a corporate board. How are they running it? One, two, three, Banana Street that's not in a subdivision. Still like, there. It's still there. Grandma's house, that brick ranch. Praise the Lord and pass the money. And for me, that's what I want people to understand. Because, you know, these trolls on social media, they're like, she doesn't know what she's talking about. She could have invested $137,000 in stock and the appreciation would have been better. Duh. Oh. But I would have had to put $137,000, not twenty six. And it's a gamble. Always. Every day. A home day. is not a gamble. No. It's not. And you get to live there. Where else are you going to live? Yes. That's the thing. You're going to have to pay rent if you went out and bought that stock. So, 
so Jade, I've kept you here forever. And I, I love it. I, Gina, and I knew this was going to happen because <laughs> I, I, I think that I could talk to you like I just lose track of time. I could talk to Me you too. forever. Me too. So if you could go back and you could tell Jade Quitman on day one, you could tell her one thing, what would that be? It's a lot of work. Put the work in. It's worth it. If you love it. I tell agents many times, if you don't love the business, get out. But I always loved the business. It's not like people come to me and they'll say, I'll say, why do you want to sell real estate? Because I like pretty homes. Because, be like, because I like architecture. Because I love going on caravan. Those are all part of what we do. But if that's the only reason that you want to sell real estate, find something else to do. But I think I didn't know how much work this was when right. I started. But I either I learned to love it or I just sort of transformed into to loving it. But I love what I do. And I think be ethical. Do the always do the right thing right. because that's what's going to give you all of your referrals. Don't sell something that you wouldn't buy. Don't yeah. sell something where you know the floor is sloping or it's next to the free, whatever the downside. Or if someone insists on that, tell them, I wouldn't buy this. Right. I wouldn't live there. Yeah. But if, if this is what you're choosing, but be honest. 100%. Because the worst thing is, is that somebody picks up the phone and calls you five years later and says, hey, I want to sell that great house you sold me. And you're thinking to yourself, oh, you mean that shit that sits on the freeway <laughs> and my hair blue when I showed it? Yeah, I definitely don't want to sell that thing again. Uh, and, and your lungs have been been inhaling all those fumes for all those years. <laughs> oh, my God. Yes, I agree. Don't do it. I love it. I love it. Jade, where can... Um, everybody find you. Well, everybody should go to Jade Mills Estates to my Instagram because I do 30 Seconds with Jade, which you've seen. And it. 30 Seconds with Jade is like a tiny little snippet of what I'm doing or five fun facts about a house or some information uh, that I believe in. Maybe not everybody. I found that out yesterday. I think I believe that we should dress like we're going to see a husband and a wife, yeah. not like we're just going to see the husband. Right. So w whatever it is you're wearing, feel comfortable and feel like you're not a threat, especially right. when you're 25 years old. Right. Wear something where the wife isn't going to say, I will never hire her. Right. Because she doesn't want you around her husband. Well, you know, I had a house uh, listed and I'll never forget this. These people came in all the they're with their agent, all these buying signs. I mean, they love it. They love it. They love it. And the husband kind of gets ahead on the tour. He walks into the master bedroom and he's standing there and he is just speechless. And there is a naked photo of the wife seller over the master bedroom bed. And his wife comes in behind him and like runs into him because he's just stopped. And she looks up and she sees the picture. She turns around to her agent. She goes, we can leave now. And, and I'm like, oh, but I thought you loved the house. She goes, every time that my husband is in bed with me, the only thing he's going to be thinking about is your seller that's up there naked. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. I, I mean, honest, a true story. And every single time that I think about, like, I'm going to the appointment, like, I want to make sure what I'm wearing, you know, that isn't showing this. And, you know, nobody loves a short dress like me. But, I mean, you, me too. you always want to cover your ass. <laughs> Literally. <laughs> In every way, in every way. I love it. Yeah. Now, Jane Mills, isn't that a, isn't that a note to, to end and that's on? That's a great one to close on. I love it. I love it. Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Glenda Baker. I am a real estate agent in Atlanta, Georgia. And today I had the opportunity to be with the one and only $8 billion woman, Jade Mills, here in Beverly Hills. As I always say, send me a text, tag me in a post, give me a call. That's what I love the most because I'd love the opportunity to talk real estate with you today. See ya.